Well, welcome to the 2017 garden. It is in, it is in full bore. This is the herb bed. And a lot of this is from uh, last year, like the sage. The tiny little thyme, which is now flowering. Lovely little purple flowers. And the oregano, which is just now getting ready to form flower buds. All the parsley is in full flower mode, as is the valerian. Uh, rosemary got trimmed this year, and is doing famously. Chives have been cut uh, about six times already, but they grow like gangbusters. Uh, red sorrel is still attempting to bolt. I, as fast as I trim it back, it tries to bolt. My my little barrel is a little uh, a little overdone. There is some uh, creeping. There's some creeping time in there. Uh, chives here, but the chives aren't growing back very slowly in the in the barrel. My brand new baby lavender. Is super happy and has bloomed a treat this year. Tucked back into the corner. I found room for it. Yes, it's a tower of potatoes. Just now filled up to the top, so we'll see how many potatoes we actually get out of it. It's already starting to come right out of the bottom and the sides of the tower, too. Now on the the other side, the one blueberry that decided to flower this year, the sunshine blue, and it looks like it's going to have an absolutely fabulous year. There are tons of berries on this thing, and I, I think one single bumblebee pollinated it all. I saw her going back and forth from this bush so many times during a day, it was ridiculous. Right behind it is the little miniature fireplace rose, which is super happy and blooming like crazy. I believe this is a summer squash. Yes, summer squash. Um, it'll get pretty big. This will give me my little patty pan squashes. Even though there isn't, even though there isn't a whole lot of insect damage on these, on this blueberry and the other blueberry, I think they didn't flower because they're still in transplant shock. I, I, I took them out of their smaller barrels and put them in these massive ones, and either they're, either they just don't have what it takes to flower this year, or, or they're in shock. I'm not sure, but I'm definitely not going to get any blueberries off them this year. Mint, fabulous mint for uh, mint juleps. The one single rose that I kept from the cuttings and it's doing really spectacularly. The other blueberry again, lovely color, no much insect damage, no flowers. My tray of random items, uh, these two zucchini will get transplanted in the next couple of days into uh, bigger pots. Dave, meet Dave. Dave is a Meyer lemon tree. Like I needed another container plant. And then we have cuttings, successful cuttings, uh, sage, oregano, rosemary. I'll probably give most of these away to friends. There are two little summer savory here, um, which I will use to um, transplant into the bigger areas um, when the when the summer savory there is finished. Oops, right past. Ah. The honeysuckle. This honeysuckle 
spectacular. Look at all the blooms. They're just beautiful. Uh, bronze, uh, bronze flowers on this one. Uh, little native daisies. I've had to control them because they just go all over the place and then they fall over. In the back is a successful little barrel of random red sorrel, strawberry, and some type of ornamental. Uh, <laughs> lettuce, <laughs> lettuce, more lettuce, lettuce anybody? Because, you know, the guinea pig is voracious and he will eat three to four heads of lettuce per day if I let him. Marigolds. I've never been able to grow marigolds, and for some reason, these just came up gangbusters for me. And I still have so much creeping time, I don't know what to do with it all. The ostrich fern in the back, doing really well. It will continue to do well until it gets too hot, and then it will go away for the year. Right now, it's really happy. Don't remember what that's called, but it's pink and purple flowers are finished. Creeping time again, because it's just so much creeping time, I don't know what to do with it all. And this is, this is the little sword fern that I rescued from the cement steps. It's now out of a pot, it's in the ground, and it's super happy. Honestly, I, um, this, this honeysuckle, I tried to kill it. I chopped it down to the ground because it had a horrendous fungal infection. But apparently chopping it down to the ground is what it needed because it's coming back and it looks pretty, it looks pretty good. Salmon berry. I don't see any flowers on this salmon berry. I'm not sure why, um, but I really like it. So I'll just leave it and, and let it do its thing. This bed's been finished, but it's not filled yet. Um, I'll keep filling it up with scraps, and then if I'm still here next year, I'll plant it out. Well, let's see. Compost bins are doing a brisk business. Although, these compost bins are not quite getting very hot, um, but the worms, the worms are doing a great job. Um, yeah, there's a little worm right there. The worms are actually doing a better job of processing all this stuff into really good compost than the heat is doing, because we haven't had a whole lot of heat. All these um, spinach, uh, daisies, alyssum, uh, random pots, these are all for children to come and take um, whenever they like, all the way up to June 18th, which is Father's Day. I just call it parental unit plant giveaway. So they'll, they'll, they'll stop by every once in a while and, you know, grab whatever they like. The last bastion of, of horror, which was this corner, which was the corner I couldn't even rototill, now has sunflowers in it. Um, these sunflowers will grow from, uh, these, these ones in the front will grow about four feet high, and the ones in the back will grow up to 10 feet high by the time they're done. rose plant. The roses are, <laughs> this is the best I've ever seen this rose bush. You would never even think that this rose bush had been sitting on the side of the house and only grew one or two stalks per year because it looks so fantastic out here and the flowers smell gorgeous.
can't remember the name of it, but it's doing really well. Brand new leaves constantly, all the time. It's supposed to be a slow grower, so I'm, you know, I'm not worried about how fast it's growing. And <laughs> believe it or not, more sunflowers that I randomly shoved into the mulch, they're actually coming up. Oh, there's another one, and another one. Uh, these tiny little ones are, fen are um, yarrow. These are going to be red, red flowered yarrow. Pumpkin, which will go up the fence. Uh, mul uh, mulberry or a, oh no, huckleberry. <laughs> this one is a baby huckleberry. Again, slow growing. That'll be good for when I leave. Oregon grape. Uh, two more pumpkins, which should be um, which should be fence trained, and another squash, chamomile. This will become a this right here will become a perennial uh, black-eyed Susan daisy plant. Horseradish, which will come out, um, which will come out of the ground this fall after the roots are finished growing. The entire thing will come out so that I can use the horseradish root. The native rose, <laughs> which should be blooming, still has not produced a single bloom at all. Whether that's because the pH of the soil is different than it's used to, or whether there's some problem I just can't see, I'm not sure but it does produce a nice amount of greenery, so I'm just gonna leave it. Remember the grapevine that I had to kill in the back? Well, it didn't die completely because here's its cutting and uh, it's pretty spectacular. I'm very happy with all the growth. It's, it's zooming up the fence this year. Strawberries. These um, these Albion strawberries were uh, were runners from last year's uh, last year's Albions, and as you can see, the tradition of very large, very red strawberries continues. This Albion strawberries are just fabulous. I really like them. And no, I, I don't mind when people come by and pick them. It doesn't bother me. Uh, parsley, probably it's probably it's last season here on this spot, but the seeds may reintroduce themselves into the front strip. The irises, which of course always grow too heavy for their own good, they're still spectacularly beautiful, so I let them, I just let them droop. The butterflies like them. And I'm going to have to do something about, this is actually a very nice little, you know, rose cutting that grew nicely and I put here, but obviously the irises are, uh, the irises are pulling it down, so I'll have to trim the iris back just a bit to give it some space. Boxwood. The boxwood continues to grow nicely and it appreciates its boxy shape. The dahlia, yes, the dahlia will grow much taller than this than this cage. So I actually put the cage here to keep it from falling over this year. As usual, it uh, as usual it got chewed down to the down to the bones when it first came up, but that's okay because it survives that and it grows spectacularly. Um. <laughs> This strip is, is a little ugly for me. Um, I did I, I put corn here, but it didn't grow. 
obviously there's either just doesn't retain enough water or there aren't enough nutrients to keep the seedling going. And these need to be trimmed down because they're done. Uh, my experiment with um, clover behind the pans was a spectacular success. Uh, the color is now gone from, from the clover, but all I have to do is just chop that down and let it sit, and next year the clover will be back up again. This is so much better than having a mud pit. I really like it better. Even if it does look a little weedy when the, when the clover is done for the year. Japanese, Japanese white irises. Very beautiful and very long lasting. These flowers will last quite a while and they will continue to come up until I think almost late fall. The side baskets doing very well. Um, little black eyed Susans and alyssums surrounding the black eyed Susan. The alyssums are annuals, but after they die, I'll keep this black eyed Susan in the pot and just start transplanting annuals each year in the pot. Creeping time. It's uh, very forgiving. Very forgiving. Kid loves me. And inside. Edamame. This is my first year attempting soybeans. They've colored up very nicely, but they're waiting for the really hefty sun to come up. Um, they were very light green, but I'm glad they've I'm glad they've darkened up. It, they may get some better growth on them. A lot of marigolds um, came up this year. In between, I've done carrots, and you see them in a lovely little line. I have volunteer nasturiums coming back. I don't mind. And my first successful year germinating summer savory. I'm really happy with how big these, the summer savory has gotten. Amaranth. The amaranth didn't grow as big as I'd like it to. It's flowering now and it's pretty, it's pretty. Um, but they really didn't get the height that I wanted on them. Dwarf ice lemon tomatoes. Um, they should not get much bigger than this. And some of them are already starting to flower, which is just fine with me. Uh, there are a few chili plants in here, but I don't know how they're going to do. We'll see if they get any bigger. Oh, uh, that. My big experiment with burpees container corn. Uh, so far, I'm pretty happy. These, these guys are gaining serious growth in an almost semi-shade situation. I think I got an 85 to 89% germination. And more potatoes. Uh, these should be German butter balls in this one. This one doesn't have too much to be left to be filled up. I'll wait till these vines get just a little bit bigger and then I'll fill it up more with compost and leave it. The other two are done being filled up. Uh, these, these should both be russet potatoes here in the container in the back. And they're very happy. All these, all these potatoes are really happy. 
more baby chilies and more baby tomatoes. Obviously, I don't have enough room for all of them. I will have to give some away to the South Corvallis Food Bank, which I'm sure they will appreciate. Lots of leeks. Because man, I can just never have enough onions, and leeks provide a lovely onion taste without having to worry about getting a bulb on them. These will continue to grow until, probably until fall. I'll leave some for the next year, not a whole lot. The chamomile in the corner is attracting all kinds of pollinators. And almost all of those are also leeks in the containers. They're pretty happy. Lettuce. These are these are bunyard lettuces. They're very small. They're supposed to be very small headed, so that's as big as they will get. All of the all of the, the large lettuces are already done for the year, and the guinea pig has eaten them all. And these should be more of the same bunyard lettuces. And believe it or not, both the pomegranates survived and leafed out extraordinarily. I don't know how many years they're going to manage to do this. They don't, they don't ever get any bigger than this, but they're still alive. And I know they're pomegranates. They're, it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. I can't believe that's it, aside from the, uh, the lovely gazebo that we've gotten. I do still have more pots and more containers, but I think this is pretty much what's going to happen for the year. I don't think anything really big or new is coming in. I am extraordinarily pleased with how this garden turned out this year. Many people have stopped to tell me how much the curb appeal of the garden has improved the home's look. I believe that's it. That is the 2017 garden for this year. I'll let you know how harvest goes.